Let us welcome our pastor. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to have you all here in the church this morning. I want to say thank God for being here. Thank you for coming to worship. For those of you who are here in person, we welcome you. For those that are with us on line, we say thank you for coming. Your coming and your presence is very encouraging to us and ask that the Almighty God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are God and forever you are God. You are our cornerstone. In you alone we put our trust and confidence. And we know that you will lead us through. The Bible says the entrance of your word giveth life and bringeth life and giveth healing to understanding. But I pray this morning that Everyone that will hear your word this morning from this pulpit will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Their understanding will expand about you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, I ask that you sanctify every heart here and those that are following us on online and those that will listen to this message hereafter. That as they hear your word, O oh God, their heart will be blessed. They will be saved and delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will all grow in faith, serving you in righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shall say, Amen. Amen. Once again, you are welcome. Last Sunday, our brother Steve spoke on the topic, Vessels of Honor. He emphasized the need for us to have a solid foundation in Christ. And this is through the word of God. You will agree with me that this is all we have been emphasizing since the beginning of this year. The need to have solid foundation in Christ. Once your foundation in Christ is solid, no matter where you go, no matter where you find yourself, you will be able to stand the test of time and withstand every storm. Amen. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We have taught the word of God from this pulpit, and by the grace of God, we will continue to speak the word of God so that your foundation can be deep and strong and remain solid. Amen. He emphasized the need for us to have, for us to be purged, purged of our sins, purged of our weaknesses, purged of everything that detached us. And he talked about having a new heart, not a renovated heart. You know, when your kitchen uh, cabinet is old, you try to renovate it, right? When your building is old, you are not trying to buy a new one, you renovate it. No, as children of God, we are not going to renovate our heart, we are going to have a heart transplant, and it is only God that can do that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And for this to take place, we need to be active participants in the things of God. Reading the Bible privately on your own like Anthony has been doing. Then attending Bible studies and church services, being involved. One of the strategies to grow in the Lord is to be involved. Don't sit at the bench. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, by His grace, I'll be speaking on a topic titled, You Are Not Alone. Amen. Amen. You Are Not Alone. A common feature in the Bible is God's promise to be with us wherever we go. It's a promise. He that promise is faithful. He does not say what he does not mean and he means what he says. Amen. One, the question I want to ask is why this continuous promise? It is because God knows of the the weight of work he has put in our hands. He has called us to be his ambassadors. He has called us to be his representatives. And he knows that this thing is not easy. And so he has promised that he will be with us. He has placed high responsibility on us. You may not know whom you are. You are a child of God. Whom he has given specific responsibilities. Like I said, he knows that 
you cannot achieve this purpose on your own. That is why he has promised that he will be with us. Amen. Amen. He guided the Old Testament prophets and leaders by his word. Through his angels and through other uh, celestial or cosmic things like the cloud, the wind, and supernatural fire. When he was leading the children of Israel from Egypt, he guided them by a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. These are supernatural things. Something he guided by fire. He showed up in the days of Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal in the form of fire. He showed up in a white wing. So God in the Old Testament presented himself to the people through angels and through these cosmic things. And in the New Testament, he presents himself to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you have the Spirit and the Spirit of God will guide us in all that we do. I want to say without missing words that as God's children, that it is possible for you to frustrate and truncate the call of God upon your life if you are not careful. Amen. We have all been called to perform specific duties in the house of God. And you need to follow, we need to follow God's own instructions if we will be able to achieve this purpose. Amen. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7, he called Abraham, I'm going to read this particularly verse 7. He said, when Abraham was 99 years, 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am of the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. That was his promise to Abraham. He appeared to him and said, Walk before me and be blameless. That was what he required from Abraham. When he appeared to Joshua, he said, be courageous. So, the, 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 the instructions he gives to us depends on our calling. God needed Abraham to be faithful and to walk before him so that his promises upon his life will be fulfilled. He took Abraham through a lot of processes. There was family, Abraham left where he was supposed to be in search of food, he went to Egypt. After some time, he came back. God ordered his footsteps. He came back and God directed him. So for Abraham to be able to fulfill his promises, he needed to walk before God. And when God tested him by asking him to sacrifice his only son, I mean his, the, the, his promised son, I don't want to say his only son because he had a son, another son called Ishmael, right? But Isaac was the promised son whom he loved. God wanted to be sure that Abraham actually loved him and walked in his ways. And he asked him to sacrifice his son. Abraham obeyed completely. Abraham was about to kill, sacrifice his son on the altar to please God when God said, Abraham, hold on. There's a lamb for you to use in presence in place of your son. By this you are proved to know me. And it was at that point of obedience that God revealed his complete package for Abraham that he will be a father of nations and through him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Praise the Lord. So, God has different functions for every one of us and we need to know what he has ought to do. The degree of God's the degree of what God requires of you as an individual depends on the scope of work that he has for you, your job description. The job description of a general manager or, and the job description of a janitor are different even though they are employed 
in the same organization, right? Because of their specific duties, they are given different job descriptions. So we also, as children of God, we have different job descriptions. I want us to watch a video clip I saw on social media recently so that uh, you can understand what I am talking about.
calamity, the young man prayed for him, his hand was restored. And the sons of another prophet were present at the meeting where this thing took place. When they got home, they shared with their father, who was also a prophet, an older prophet, what had happened. In fact, the king, when the king saw the miracle that took place in his life, he asked the young man to follow him to his house to eat and to drink. And the young man said, I will not follow you to your house to eat or drink anything in this place because God asked me not to. Amen. The point of emphasis is that the Lord asked me not to say, even if you were to give me half of your kingdom, I will not follow you because God asked me not to. God also told him not to return in the same way as he came. Simple instruction, distinct instructions. The young prophet listened to that. After his message, he went on the opposite road, going to his house. And then the sons of this old prophet told their father what happened. The father asked his sons which road this young prophet took. They pointed in direction. And this old man saddled his uh, donkey and ran after the young prophet. He met the young prophet sitting down under a tree. Remember the Bible tells us in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man who walks in the way of the Lord, who does not stand, sit, or walk in the ways of the sinners. Right? But his delight is meditating on the word of God. His interest is obeying the word of God. This young man, instead of walking, instead of running, he sat down to rest. And some of us Christians are sitting down today. We are resting where we should not rest. We are making excuses. Times are hard. We are making excuses. I am busy. I met my son John last week and I asked him, did, did I tell you I'm a pastor? He said, yes, you did. I said, do you go to church? I said, oh, I'm so busy. I just wanted to introduce the gospel to him. After he uh, attended to me as my surgeon, I had to talk to him also as, as a pastor. He said, I'm so busy working. I said, no. The days that you have were given to you by God. You've got to use it for God. One, two, three hours on a Sunday in a week is not too much for you to give to God. Praise the Lord. Not give, don't give excuses for not doing what you are supposed to do. In fact, the preacher said people give excuses when they don't want to do the thing. It's raining, it's sunny, it's snowing, I'm hungry, I'm busy, my children, my husband, my wife. No. Don't give excuses. As this young man sat down, the old prophet caught up with him and met him and said, are you the young man that came to minister today? He said, yes. The old man said, come with me. Come and eat and drink in my house. Giving the opposite of the instruction that God gave. So if any person, prophet, preacher, or pastor, gives you any instruction contrary to the word of God, please don't obey. Amen. I've told you that any day I come on this pulpit and preach anything outside of the Bible, don't obey. Amen. The young man said, no, God asked me not to go with you, not to eat or drink in this place or go in the same way that I came. Don't give out too much information. The old, the old man said, follow me to go and eat. He didn't ask him. The God asked him not to go in the same way. He gave too much information about what God told him. Are you with me? The old man said, and, and, and he said I'm also a prophet like you. An older prophet. So be careful of older prophets who speak outside the word of God. The Bible says he was lying. He told the young prophet that an angel of the Lord appeared to me and asked me to bring you to my house to eat. When a pastor is too greedy for money, he will not be able to speak the word of God as it is. 
The woman said, follow me home, come and eat. An angel of the Lord asked me to come and bring you. And he followed. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. He followed the old man to his house, sat down, ate and drank as they were eating and drinking. Look at what the Lord said in verse 21. Verse 19. So the man of God returned with him, with him and ate and drank in his house. Verse 20. While they were sitting at table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord said. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment, the command of the Lord your God gave you. You have defied the word of the Lord. You have not kept the commandment that he gave you. You came back and ate, ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. And as he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. Some people who passed saw the body lying there with the lion standing beside the body. And they went and reported it to, in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard it, he said, I quote, This is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord. The Lord has given him over to the lion, which had mourned him and killed him as the word of the Lord had warned him. Praise the Lord. People will lead you to sin and you will stand judgment alone. It was the old prophet that convinced him. Told him an older prophet, I am more experienced in the ministry. I know more than you. Follow me. The angel of the with persuasive words. He took this young man. And while they were eating, the Lord spoke that because you have done this. And when he died, the old prophet said, Yes, that is the man. And that is a warning. The Bible says that these stories, these things are written for us to take example from them. Amen. It is not to put fear in our hearts, but it is to prepare us for the job that we have been assigned and called to do as children of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the Lord says he will be with us. So, you are not alone in this journey. If he was not going to be with us, he would not have said it. He said, I will be with you. Take him for his word. I want to take us to the scripture that says, fear not. Incidentally, Brother Anthony quoted that Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. If you go through scripture, you will discover fear not. You discover that fear is one of the weapons of the enemies against God's children. Fear gives faith. And if you want your faith to grow and stand, you must not be afraid. Amen. Fear not appears in the Bible 365 times. Amen. Fear not appears in the Bible 365 times. And you know that there are 365 days in a year. So, for every day, there is a verse of scripture that says, fear not. Why? Because God knows that fear is a serious weapon that the enemy uses against his children. And he says, fear not. You will do yourself some good by relying on the word of God more than your emotions. You will do yourself some good by relying on the word of God more than situations and circumstances that surround you and what other people are saying. For me, God says, fear not. If he says it, I believe it, I work on it, and I'm as bold as a lion. Praise the Lord. 
in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. He said, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Fear not, I am with you. The road is narrow and full of dangers. There are challenges facing us as a church and as a servant of God. But hear ye the word of the Lord today saying, Fear not, I am with you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. The Lord will fight for you as he fought for our fathers of old. This is a profound statement from God the Almighty who never fails, who never changes, who says only what he means and keeps his promises. He is a covenant keeping God. So in your work with God, in your daily activities and relationship with God, don't be afraid. The enemy, the devil, will try to put fear in your mind. But you cannot do it. You are not educated enough. You are this, you are that. You are not competent. You don't know the script. The devil will try to discourage you by all means from every angle. But hear me, hear ye the word of the Lord that says, fear not. I am with you. Don't be discouraged. Amen. This same God that we are talking about, he was with the prophet demonstrating his power to them in various capacity that he has called them to. To Joseph as a leader, he gave him wisdom. Amen. To Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as students and as politicians and public servants in the city of Babylon, he was with them, he gave them wisdom and they overcame. Praise the Lord. He was with Moses. He was with Joshua, both as a leader and as army, an army general. If God says it, he will do it. Amen. So in Joshua chapter 5, chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. Joshua chapter 1, 5 to 10. It says, They shall not any man be able to stand before thee in all thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this, unto this people shall thou divide the and divide for inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give to them. Amen. So God was with, with Moses. As Joshua was taking over, he came to Joshua and said, as I was with Moses, I'm a promise keeper, I'll be with you. In the same way, I'm saying to each and every one of you, both those in person, those following us online, and those that watch this message hereafter, and as, a, as children of God, do not be afraid. The God of our fathers will be with you. Amen. This is the condition. He said, verse 7, Only be that strong and courageous that they may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left that they may prosper whatsoever you do. You do. And he went further to say that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth you shall meditate upon it day and night. Be observant to do what is written therein, so that you can make your ways prosperous and have good sources. That was God's instruction to Joshua. Be strong, be courageous. You are going to meet vast armies. You are going to meet diverse people. You are going to meet, meet men and women of intelligence. The Bible says, don't be afraid. When you have to confront them or when you have to speak, God will speak through you. Amen. Like I shared with you, after my doctor showed me, I just looked for an opportunity to tell, share the gospel with him. I started with it, but did I tell you I am a pastor? He said, yes. Do you go to church? Oh, I'm too busy. Amen. 
The word of God has been presented. God will give you an idea. Jesus met a woman at the well. He didn't start by saying, give your life to Christ. God, he said, can I have a drink? And the woman said, you are a Jew. I'm a Gentile. There's no relationship with us. And Jesus said, if you know he who is talking to you, you will ask him to give you the water of life that you may notice or come here again. And the woman was inside. They said, well, I don't need to come here to suffer to look for water anymore. Give me this drink. And Jesus said, go call your husband. The woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, yes, yeah, true. You have spoken where you have no husband because you have had five. And this one you are staying with now is not yours. Are you a prophet? The woman left her uh, job at the well and went to the city to proclaim, come, I've seen a man who told me everything I've ever done. And the Bible recorded that the people persuaded Jesus to stay with them for Mondays. Why? Because a woman obeyed the voice of God. Why? Because Jesus spoke the word. You've got to speak the word and leave, leave the rest for God to do. Amen. Amen. So he was with Joshua and gave Joshua instruction not to depart from the laws of Moses. I'm also passing this same instruction to you and I take it to myself to be strong and be courageous, not to turn to the left or turn to the right, no matter what is happening in society, people are no more interested in going to church, in serving God, they are pursuing money, pursuing education, pursuing all sorts of things. Education is necessary, money is necessary, all these things are necessary. You are supposed to put them all together for the propagation of the gospel. He said to evangelist uh, Anderson, he said, I'm not an evangelist, I'm an accountant, I own an accounting firm, and through the resources I had, I supported. The, uh, the, the two churches and offices. That's not what I called you to be. I called you to be an evangelist. So, my friend, my brothers and sisters, what have you been called to do? Are you doing it? If you have not, say, as we hear the word of God, take a clue from this message and begin to ask God, what exactly do you want me to do and how should I do it? He called the other one who is supposed to be an accountant and said, come on, I'm a pastor. I have 750 souls. 50 people in my church. That's not what I called you to do. I wanted you to be an accountant so that through you, I'll raise money for two churches that will reach more souls in thousands. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. When Jesus rose from the dead, he met his apostles. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, which is the Great Commission, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20, Jesus came and said to them, All powers in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the close of age. This is the Great Commission. I am with you. Go teach the word of God. Teach it as it is. Not as they want it. I will let you know what the scripture says. And what you should do. And I pray God gives me the grace. To obey. As the spirit also leads me to. Teaching them to observe. Nothing less, nothing more. There are different traditions. There are different doctrines. Teaching them to observe all that have commanded you. What has he commanded? Love your neighbors as yourself. Love the Lord that God with all their heart, with all their strength, and with all their mind. That is the command. Go, tell people about Jesus. That is the instruction. And because he knows that it is challenging, it is difficult, he said, I will be with you. It's like me giving you my credit card. And also give you the PIN number. And I said, there is money in my account. Sure. You test it, you slot it, check account balance, millions. You say, let me try the pin. You take just $10. You have not helped yourself. You trust God for some things, you don't trust God for everything. 
He said, I will be with you to the close of age. And I want you to begin, want us to begin to trust God for everything. Risk your life for God. And God will defend his promises concerning you. He's not a man that he will fail. Neither the son of man that he will lie. Has he promised that he cannot do it? Amen. I will be with you to the close of age. For me, the age has not closed. For me, as far as I'm concerned, the Lord is with me and will be with me until the age closes. And when the age closes, I will, will meet at his feet when he comes again to take us home. Either at rapture or at death. Be prepared. Rapture will take place at any time or you may die at any time. I may die at any time. The news will just say, oh God, he's gone to face judgment. I will just stand and give account of ourselves to God. Either as evangelists, as teachers, as accountants, as whatever profession the Lord has called you to with the primary purpose of promoting the gospel. So whatever profession you find yourself, it is for the primary purpose of promoting the gospel of Christ. Praise the Lord. In Mark chapter 16, verses 20, verses 15 to 20, Mark, Mark 16, 15 to 20, Jesus said, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord has spoken to them, he received or he was received into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the world with signs following. Amen. So when you obey, when Jesus asked the disciples to go, when they went, the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord was with them. Because they performed signs and wonders. The Lord was with them. They laid their hands on the sick, the sick were healed. They cast out demons. The Lord confirmed his presence with them with signs and wonders. So if you dare to go out without fear or favor, the Lord will perform signs and wonders confirming his presence with you. Amen. Amen. Try it. Believe it. Act it. And you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 10 verses 38 the Bible says, see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about healing all that we see. And the Bible said, for God was with him. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus in the form of a dove at baptism. He received the anointing even though he was the son of God. But he needed the anointing to operate on earth here as a human being. The Bible says in verse 38, for God was with him. The Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he will also quicken your mortal body. So dear friends, let's trust God's word. Let's put our anchor on Jesus, the solid rock that never fail and obey his commandment. Hallelujah. He said, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. In John chapter 16, verses 7 to 15, Fifteen, John 16, 7 to 15. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit. Said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the word of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and 
you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judge. Verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and deliver to you. Praise the Lord. So Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to guide us, is to teach us, is to help us to fulfill God's purpose in our life. You can only activate this by believing and asking. In the movie we watch, the clip of what he said, if you had asked me, I would have told you what to do. To the woman, she said, they, they, they said, you asked me, and I helped you to raise three children. And those three children have impacted 1.7 million souls. What a great exploit. What are you doing for the Lord? Have you found out what God wants you to do? Please find out. Be courageous and know that God said he will be with you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, there the Holy Spirit was released upon the apostles. After all said that done, Jesus was about to go, the disciples asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They thought he was going to be a political leader. Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said, it is not for you to know the time or the season that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power to obey. Power to follow. Power not to be afraid. The grace to do what you are called to do. Because God said, I am with you. The Holy Spirit was with the apostles. And the apostles did all that they were supposed to do. The Bible says, as after, it says after he said that, he ascended into heaven. He disappeared. And what happened? The angel of the Lord had came and said to the men, Why do you stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, as you have seen him go, he will come in the same manner. Praise the Lord. So that's what you have to preach. Preach Jesus. His birth, his death, his resurrection, and his coming. Let people know what you know about God. What do you know about God? You know that he has saved you. Start by sharing your testimony. What the Lord has done for you. How he has saved you. How he has helped you. What you have heard him done in the lives of other people. Turn to the scripture. Say when you meet them, don't be afraid of what to say. At that very moment, I will tell you, I will give you what to say. Praise the Lord. All that God needs from you is disposition. All that God requires of you is acceptance, is obedience. And when you do that, you become a faithful child of God. And that day we say to you, welcome into my kingdom. You blessed of my father. And if you did not do it, he will not hesitate to say, go away from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know ye not. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. In order to enjoy every assured presence of God, we must follow his word as contained in the Bible, which is the scope of work. We don't need to make the rules. God is the one that makes the rule. Praise the Lord. He that called us makes the rule. You cannot do it on your own. You have to rely on him as a soldier that has been enlisted to fight for him. We are all called to perform specific duties in the house of God. I've said that before, and I want to say it again. You may not wear a collar as a pastor. You may not be an evangelist. But for sure, you are somebody that God wants to use, and that is why you are here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. 
Why? Because he said, I will be with you. However, we are called to win souls for Christ. No matter what function you perform in the church, in the body of Christ, our primary assignment is to win souls for Christ. Let whatever you do point people to Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening. Let us pray. You bow down your heads and talk to God by yourself. God, here I am. What do you want me to do? Lord, here I am. What do you want me to do? And how do you want me to do it? Pray. Ask. Ask for grace to obey. Some people know what they have called the God to do. They know what they ought to do. But they are not able because of fear and lack of grace. Ask for grace. Give me the grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me the grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me the grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me the grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Ask God to fill you with His grace. Ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. The grace to be courageous. The grace to be bold. The grace to speak forth. The Bible says you did not receive the spirit of timidity, but of boldness, sound mind, and self-control. Ask God to renew his spirit in you. Help me, Lord. I want to be a vessel of honor, a vessel unto good work. Help me to accomplish your purpose in my life. Help me not to follow without looking back. Help me to be strong and courageous in the face of fear and danger for my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Forgive my past sins of laziness, of idleness. Let this waste take root in me as I abide in your world. Let this word grow forth and produce fruits fruits that other people believers and unbelievers will eat from and turn to you in righteousness help me lord thank you father pray for your family members ask god to bless them Ask God to draw them to Him. Those that have not known Him, your friends. You won't be happy if you are in heaven and your friends and family members are in hell. You have a responsibility to them. Yes, Lord. Bring before you all my family members and friends that yet do not know you. Lord, that you will open their hearts. To hear your word, you open their ears to hear your word, their hearts to understand. Give them the grace, show them mercy, Lord, that they may turn from darkness unto the marvelous light. Help me to shine as light in their midst, which darkness cannot comprehend.
Pray for the salvation of this community. Pray for the salvation of this community. For revival. For people to have a heart to seek after God. Let there be a revival in this community. And if God revival breaks out, you are the people that God will use. Lord, revive our land again. Revive this country, Canada. Revive new market to God. Revive Ontario. Let it be at the outbreak of revival. Taste and desire for your word, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one of us that we shall be carriers of your power, of your anointing. Let your grace and mercy be multiplied unto us so that we can become vessels of honor that will bring about revival at this end time. The Bible says, towards the end, iniquity we are bound, men shall be lovers of self rather than lovers of God. They shall take the form of religion but deny the power therein. This shall not be our portion. Lord, we will not partake in iniquity. We shall be those that draw people from darkness to light. that God will send him more laborers to this church, to this vineyard so that we will be fully equipped for the propagation of the gospel sending financial supporters sending evangelists teachers, instrumentalists those that he wants to use, he wants to use to fulfill his purpose in our lives God sending laborers to your vineyard those that will be committed those that will be loyal to you. Those that will be desirous of us pounding the gospel. That every means is possible. With their talents. With their time. And their treasures. Let no one hold back. The gift that God has given to him. To save him. In this place. Expand us O oh God. Increase us numerically, spiritually, financially. Grant us good health of spirit, soul, and body that we will be able to stand to propagate the gospel. Lord, you say you sent forth your word and you healed the, the sick and deliver them. Therefore, Lord, this morning as your word has come, I pray for all those that are sick that they receive their healing in the name of Jesus Christ. That those that are possessed be delivered from every satanic bondage, oppression, intimidation, and frustration. May they be set free from the shackles of the enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your power come into us and manifest with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that this week will be a fruitful week to each and every one of us. That whatever we do, whenever we find ourselves, we will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever we do, whenever we find ourselves, we will be successful. And your grace and mercy will manifest in our lives. As many, oh God, that I need of one thing or the other from you, I pray for them this morning. That you boost their faith. And grant them their heart desires in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty and ever living God. We pray for those that are waiting for the fruits of the womb, that you bless them. Those that are pregnant, help them carry their pregnancies to them. Those that are desirous of their spouses, Lord, that you direct them. Thank you for your son that is going to the college. You will go with him. Use him as a point of to reach all the students in our midst. The Lord, as they walk with you, they shall prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail against any member of this church in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone shall say, Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the mighty God forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, 
And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. God bless you. See you next Sunday. And see you at Bible study as well on Wednesday. Awesome. So glad to see everyone. There's refreshments.